Hi everyone, in this video I will critique the sample research prospectus that I wrote for you and I'm going to try and make this as condensed as possible just because I am uploading this video from home and my internet connection here is of course not as fast as it is at the university so I'm going to try and keep this um, as simple as I can and with that said you do have the annotated version which is what I'm using to help me with narrating this video. You do have the annotated version of this paper in the course site so the things that I'm going to be pointing out for you are available in the comments and the margins of that sample paper. So just to get started, um, one APA feature that I will call attention to, and I'm not going to talk a lot about APA in this paper just because I've done that with earlier critique videos, um, but some of you still I know are having issues with adding the words running head and then the colon here and the header on the first page, and I will try to provide you some instructions for that. Now I haven't been deducting any points for that, but I do point that out for you just because there are probably some faculty that you may end up in their courses later on and if you're using APA style and you don't quite have this right it is possible you may be penalized for this in the future so again I haven't been deducting points for this even when I'm commenting on it but in the future it's probably something that you do want to know just because this is an APA feature so you should have the words running head and a colon in the header on the title page and that precedes of course your paper title or if the paper title exceeds 50 characters which remember that includes the letters in the words as well as the spaces between the words if the title exceeds 50 characters, then you do need to abbreviate it for the running head or the header. Now, as you can see, my paper title is much longer. It has this subtitle here, and that doesn't appear up here because that would exceed 50 characters. Now, of course, on the middle of the page, you will have your full paper title. Double space below that should be your name, and then double space below that should be your university affiliation. For the most part, this is being done correctly. However, some people are you know, adding the date or course information, and you don't need to do that. It's just going to be paper title, your name, and then your university affiliation. Now, remember that with this assignment, you do have an abstract, and that will be on its own separate page. So this is the first paper for which you've had to include that. Now, the abstract Abstract is typically brief, usually only about a paragraph, and that's what you're going to see here. Um, it's just a summary or an overview of the paper. So the idea is that just like a journal article, you can read the abstract and tell from that paragraph, is this something you should continue reading? The idea of the abstract in a paper like this is that the reader can easily read this, this paragraph that's available. Sometimes you'll see a two paragraph abstract that they can read that content really quickly and determine whether or not to continue reading the document. So of course that means that the abstract really needs to review the major points of the paper it needs to make it clear what this paper is um, the kind of content that kinds of content that the reader will find etc and I explained for you what the abstract should feature so if you look back at the assignment description that attachment um, the blueprint for the assignment it will spell out for you what you want to have here now what I've done in this first sentence is that I have set up the broad topic of the paper and this also starts to identify what the significance is of this topic because I point out okay this is what food insecurity is I define it and then I indicate that a substantial number of college students throughout the United States as well as other countries are affected by it so this is useful in case the reader isn't familiar with this terminology or the fact that there are some differences in the way that this is defined even though for the most part there's consensus it's useful to include this information and then this last part of the sentence helps to tell the reader well there are a lot of people that are actually um, experiencing food insecurity and given how many people are dealing with this this is probably something that is worthwhile to really look further into. Now this next sentence, as I've indicated, it continues to focus on that broad topic um, and then it also is um, moving a little bit more into what specifically this paper is going to focus on. It starts to direct us toward the research part because it indicates that even though a lot of people are affected by food insecurity, a lot of college students, that we don't really know that much about this issue, that this is really an underdeveloped area of research, particularly in relation to the effects. And so we're starting to segue from the broad sort of research emphasis into the more specific and then also setting up that there's a gap in the research. So within just these first two sentences, the reader is starting to get a feel for what this paper is, what the topic is, and then what specifically it is I will be looking at. 
Now here, again, significance is suggested as I've pointed out in this comment right here. So I'm indicating that until we really do more research and fully understand this issue, we're not really going to be able to provide the resources that college students need in order to deal with their food insecurity. And so as I continue the sentence, I do make it clear this is a prospectus, it is a research proposal, because I state that I'm proposing two studies in this document that will address the gap in the current knowledge. So about midway through my abstract, midway through this paragraph, I'm making it clear this is a proposal and I'm specifically going to discuss two potential studies. Now I could be even more specific here. I could say that I propose a small scale study or a pilot study and a large scale study. I could be a bit more specific. You don't have to do that, but you do definitely need to make it clear in this abstract that this is a research proposal and that you are going to be discussing studies that you would be outlining. Now, as I continue, I give a little bit of information about the methodology, just really broadly. You don't need to get specific here. So I indicate that I would be using semi-structured interviews as well as surveys, and that I would be collecting data from food bank staff and clients. Okay. Now, I could be more specific, but this is really sufficient for an abstract. The reader knows that I'm going to discuss studies, knows the basic methodology, knows the samples that I would be looking for, and then also knows specifically what it is I would be hoping to collect in my data. I would want to find out about the causes, effects, and then potential ways um, that this could be responded to. Now here I'm explaining what I anticipate I would find, so just really a general hypothesis. I'm indicating that I think my studies would probably replicate the findings of the studies that are already published, right? Extent means already existing. So you do want to point out what it is you expect you would find or what your hypothesis or hypotheses would be, but again you don't need to get too terribly specific here. Um, if you think that your studies would reinforce what the literature already shows, then you can offer some basic information here like this and then if you want you can be more detailed as you get into the paper because again remember an abstract really should just be a brief summary or overview so it shouldn't give everything away in it right um, and then again I'm highlighting significance or the value because I'm explaining that um, I anticipate that my approach is going to make a contribution because studies that are currently out there don't use a mixed methods approach and then also because I would be proposing to collect data at various universities so that I could compare and contrast them within a single study that that's another way that I would make a contribution so remember there are a lot of ways that your um, proposed study or studies could have value it may be that there is a gap in knowledge that those studies would specifically address. It may also be that you're proposing a method that prior studies haven't used. And so through your studies, um, researchers in the field could understand another way of really approaching examining this topic. Um, so there are a lot of different ways that, and then also before I continue that thought, um, another way it could make a contribution is by looking at a sample or samples that haven't previously been studied. So again, there are a lot of ways that your research can make a contribution. So just think about the different ways that your proposed studies may hold value. Now, I'm going to call your attention to another APA feature because this is one that I'm still seeing a few people miss. Remember that on the first full page of content, so on this paper it's going to be page three and your previous assignments it was page two. On the first line of that page, you do need to write your paper title completely and it needs to be centered. Okay, so a few of you are still missing that. Make sure your paper title does appear on this page and appears centered on the first line. Now remember for this paper, you do have individual sections that are contained within it and those sections should be labeled. However, you're not going to label your introduction with literature review because there's not really a point to do that um, given that we've got our title here and usually you're not going to see an introduction labeled anyways. So this is really in keeping with what you would typically see if you were looking at um, an academic article or some other piece of scholarship. So what I've done here in the introduction, I start off with the broad topic, but what I'm doing here is I'm providing some statistical information. Specifically, I'm giving a little bit of history saying that Michigan State University was the first to open a student food bank, and this occurred in 1993, and that this food bank is distributing over 50,000 pounds of food each year to students and their families. So this is a good way of starting to orient the reader to the topic and also grabbing their attention because we're finding out that you know this issue 
obviously is one that has a history, you know, going all the way back to 1993, we were seeing um, universities realize that their students were going to class hungry and they really needed assistance. And then also this number, a lot of people would probably be surprised to find out that a campus food bank is giving out over 50,000 pounds of food a year. That's, that's a large number. So this again is a good way of orienting the reader to the basic topic, grabbing their attention and prompting them to continue reading. Now what I start to do after I get out of that is I start to then call the reader's attention to exactly how significant this issue is, right? So as I point out in this third sentence, we're seeing an increasing number of on-campus food banks. Um, students are food insecure both nationally and internationally, and it doesn't necessarily matter gender, race, or other demographic factors. Students on a wide spectrum are being affected by this. So again, I'm highlighting significance, I'm pointing out just how wide scale this problem is and that's starting to set up why my research will be valuable. So in this next sentence, what I do is I start to make a shift into research, right? Because your introduction, it does need to lead the reader from here's the broad topic into, okay, let me start to, to focus on research specifically, right? Because if your introduction really just focuses on the topic, then that can make it read as though the paper is going to be just a general research paper about the topic or possibly an argument in favor about the topic. So you need to really set up your introduction so that it makes it clear this is a proposal, that you're going to really focus on research about the topic and not the topic itself. So again, set up the introduction to highlight you're focusing on research about the topic, not the topic itself. Now, as we continue, I start to set up that transition into the exact topic that I wanna look at. So not just food insecurity broadly, but specifically the effects of food insecurity on college students, all right? So what I've done in this sentence here, which acts as my thesis, is that I've pointed out there is a gap in the research. I say that research addressing these three areas, and those three areas would be what causes food insecurity, um, the effects of it, and ways to deal with it. So I'm highlighting that there's a gap in this information and that especially limited information has been paid to um, trying to examine what the effects are. And so it's that gap which I'm intending to address with the research I'm proposing in this document. So you can see how in this sentence, which is the thesis, it's really sort of a self-contained sentence as far as the reader could essentially just take this sentence away. They would know there's a gap. They would know what specifically I want to look at. They would know that this is a research proposal, right? So you want a really strong thesis sentence, and there are various ways to write that. You know, this isn't meant to be a template where you just put in your own information. But again, that thesis, just like the thesis for any paper, should make the purpose of the document clear. And it needs to really get to the specific instead of remaining focused on the broad topic that you're looking at. Now, starting in the second paragraph of the paper, that's where I'm starting to set up the literature review. And remember that this is the same as the literature review paper you wrote for assignment three, except that it is really condensed down. So you have the same goal here as far as you need to inform the reader this is the current state of the research. You need to be able to basically just really briefly summarize methodology findings, and you need to point out gas laws limitations. So it's the exact same as that paper, except you have much less space to do all of that in so you know don't don't feel like this is you know something completely brand new to you it's not you've already developed those skills in the prior assignment it's just that what you really need to be able to do here is you need to be that much more effective at summarizing okay and that's one reason why the description also tells you not to directly quote in this section because there's not really space for you to do that you really need to strengthen your skills here and summary and paraphrase so I get that broad topic sentence, right, because that allows me to start synthesizing from the start. And what you're going to see here is that I've really tried to condense as much as possible my synthesis. So I sort of point out two themes or patterns across the literature in this single sentence here, right? So in general, scholars agree what food insecurity is, right? And I'm just pointing out the exact definition that I pulled from. And even though, again, you really shouldn't directly quote, the only reason that I have some quotation here is because there's not really another way to put this. But again, you're not going to see this as a major part of it. So if you just really can't summarize or paraphrase certain pieces, it's okay if you directly quote, but that should be incredibly limited. So just keep that in mind. Their studies also show 
food insecurity is widespread. And what you can see I've done here is that I've used a single parenthetical citation to allow me to synthesize a bunch of sources. Um, so I've got several of my sources already cited here. And just from this first opening part of the paragraph, I'm already meeting the requirement as far as the number of sources that have to be cited. Now remember that if you do include multiple sources in a single parenthetical citation, what you need to do is you need to alphabetize them just like they would appear in the references list. You need to separate them with semicolons and you need to follow APA style as far as author information, comma, and the publication year and use ampersand.